Hello, everyone, and welcome to the I2B2 Transmart Foundation Community Meeting for October 2017. We're delighted that you could join us today. Um, I want to remind everyone that this is being recorded and will be available both on our YouTube channel as well as on our website within a day or two. For today's agenda, uh, we're going to go through uh, our membership program and give you a status of where we are. Um, we're going to spend a fair amount of time on a report from our project management committees and look at the roadmap of our current platforms uh, and go through that in a, in a bit of detail. Uh, Diane is going to give us an update on the I2B2 European Academic Users Group meeting that took place in Paris last week uh, and also uh, tell us about an upcoming conference at the AMIA conference, uh, our attendance uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, and then um, have a, a time for some discussion at the end. Uh, so Diane and I will be um, uh, running the meeting today. Uh, Keith is at a conference uh, in Orlando, Florida. So uh, Diane, I'm going to ask you to come on and uh, talk about our membership program. It was an update. And you should be unmuted now, sorry. All right, thank you. I think I need to be unmuted. Um, yeah, so I will give um, an update um, on the membership program. Next slide, Rudy. Oh, there we go. Um, so just, uh, we had talked about this before, but I wanted to give everybody a, a chance to take a look at the, the current membership list. Um, these were people that we um, uh, included um, during the initial um, merger of the foundation, uh, people from the I2B2 community and also the Transmart community. These are people that um, have contributed their, um, their agreements um, back to the, the foundation. So next slide. Um, and also just a, a, a reminder, the membership committee will um, actually um, nominate new members once a year. So the, um, we, we sent out the nomination packages and uh, 15 uh, new members have been nominated today. Oh, actually, I think we just got three more in today. Um, so this is 18. So 18 new members, uh, membership uh, members have been nominated. Um, if you know of an individual that should be nominated, you can take a look at the current list of members and actually contact them. Um, only one member uh, can, a member can only nominate a new member, a one new member. But um, if you know of any, please contact those folks. Um, the election um, of the new members will be conducted electronically between, um, my go-to meeting is in the way, November 8th and 10th. Is that right, Rudy? Yep, that's right. I gotta memorize my thing, okay, sorry about that. Um, and the new member is elected when they receive more than 50% of the uh, votes cast. So we have our first member meeting scheduled for um, November 14th. Um, and the agenda will be really to Kind of organize ourselves um, as a membership group and set up you know priorities and roadmaps uh, for the membership committee um, as a whole you know one one example that um that i would really like to i'm hoping that the group will focus on is uh, particularly on the itb side um, is to set up um you know voluntary training programs similar to what uh, transmart offers uh, Transmart has a, as, as many of you know, has a, a monthly training program that um, is offered to the community that, that really, I think, provides a lot of benefits. And I think that's something that um, will, will be uh, something we can pull together on the I2B2 side as well. Um, I, I, I get a lot of, um, you know, requests from I2B2 um, 
members to to um, you know connect them with other people that can help them um, with you know training and education both on the the technical side like how to implement ITB2 and how to set up uh, you know a lot of the um, the features but also even like how do you you know how 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 do you as an organization how do you set up your your training for your um for your uh, user community and there's um there's some great great examples out there so that's just one example of, of what I um, I hope the membership committee will um, will focus on, and I'm sure the group will will have other ideas. So next slide, Rudy. Okay, so I think now we'll switch to the um, PMC reports. Each of our project management committees, um, we have three active committees now: one for the Transmart platform one for the I2B2 platform and one for the I2B2 Transmark combined platform. And we'll go through those um, one at a time right now. Uh, I'll do the first update um, and talk about the Transmark PMC. Uh, the Transmark PMC meets every other week right now, and we're working on a number of releases. Um, the, the team uh, is comprised of uh, this group of folks, and you can see that it includes uh, a few of the, the foundation um, team, uh, a number of uh, users, as well as a number of key contributors of uh, code and uh, information to, to the platform. Uh, and it is this team, uh, this PMC makes the decisions basically on what goes in the release and when a release is ready to be released, has gone through all the testing, et cetera. And then um, the team, the, the PMC makes its recommendations to the board uh, in terms of when when we actually do releases, et cetera. And so this this team has been in place for, I think, about three years now. We've done a number of releases. Uh, people have come on and off the, the committee based on um, uh, who was working and what types of things were actually going in each release. Uh, and as I say, we meet every other week. The current roadmap that we're working on, um, we had the 16.2 release earlier this year. Um, as things have moved along, and I think I discussed this last time, uh, we're doing a 16.3 release now uh, within the next uh, few weeks by the end of the year, and that will include, uh, I'll go through the details of that in a minute, uh, but mainly it's an Oracle, adding Oracle to the 16.2 platform, uh, a 16.4 release in the spring, uh, and then uh, going to the next full release of the platform at the, towards the end uh, of 2018. And we're also working on a 17.1 core only release. And, and I'll go through the details um, right now about what's in each of these. The 16.3 platform, uh, we're expected to have it in December. Uh, this will include now both an Oracle and a Postgres release. 16.2 uh, only had Postgres. Um, there, will, there may be a few extra workflows in SmartR, um, but these are the, the seven workflows that are there today, and they'll be included. Uh, and there is a, an update from Clarivate on the P-Link integration uh, and that also may be included in it. And uh, this will all be uh, wrapped up, we're hoping, by uh, the end of the year and made available. Then uh, the, we'll start working on 16.4. Again, it'll be both Oracle and Postgres release. Uh, the new workflows, um, there will be some new workflows in SmartR, in particular Imperial College has several Etrix workflows uh, and we'll be working to try to get those included uh, in this release. Um, and uh, there's also been some work on looking at in, uh, increasing the limits of how large of a study can be loaded. And we'll be working to, to get that bumped up uh, a bit higher uh, to allow higher, some larger studies to be uh, included. And of course, we'll have our usual bug fixes and upgrades. We're uh, hoping that uh, this release will be available in the spring of 2018 and uh, working towards that goal. Um, also, uh, if you remember this, the 17.1 release, 17.1 um, was a project that, that was funded by a number of, uh, of our um, uh, partners uh, and was completed earlier this year. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of interest in having uh, the, uh, the, the platform version of this uh, available. Uh, as you may recall, this does not include um, a graphical user interface. Uh, some of the, most of the plugins do not work with this release uh, and will need to be added uh, and, um, you know, some limitations. But still, the, the server side of this, which we're calling the core only release, has a lot of interest uh, to the community. You can start to, 
you know, with uh, particularly um, folks who are working, doing some um, of their own programming, can can make use of the different modules uh, for um, longitudinal data studies and, and uh, uh, it's enhancements to cross-study analysis and uh, genomics integration with the Arvados platform. These are all available on the server side, uh, and uh, this release is of particular interest to a, a few groups, and so we are making this available. We, we've had it out in beta, uh, and um, uh, there have been some folks who are working on it. Uh, we are putting the, the final test servers for the final release together, uh, and we'll hope to have a release uh, candidate for this within just a couple weeks, and we're shooting for a full release of this on November 17th. Uh, again, this goes through our normal PMC process, and uh, the, we'll be reviewing the, the results of all the testing that was done, uh, looking for other comments from the community, and we'll have a final vote on this um, before it's released. And so the target is to get this out, uh, hopefully in November. The larger project that uh, we're, there's work already uh, initiated on is to really pull together um, the full release uh, that includes the 17.1 projects, plus all the, the capabilities that were in the 16 version of the Transmore platform. Uh, this includes um, you know, the extensions that I mentioned, uh, a lot of architectural enhancements, uh, I, uh, one or more graphical user interfaces. There are actually uh, two at least under development today. Uh, some enhancements to the loading tools uh, of data, uh, the next generation of smart R called Fractalis uh, that was actually introduced at the Paris meeting um, and um, some uh, improving integration with I2B2, uh, improved API, uh, et cetera, uh, and uh, a very, a very uh, strong, uh, a very large amount of automated testing. And so we're, we're targeting this release for later in 2018. Uh, and this is going to be the uh, pretty much the, the, the main focus now of the PMC. Um, uh, uh, to, to work towards this um, while we're supporting the version 16 uh, of the platform. And our anticipation is version 16 will be supported for at least uh, two, two more years. So, uh, to, you know, to allow people to, you know, prepare for and get ready for the new, this new uh, significant update uh, of the platform. So again, that's our, our overall um, roadmap and um, we'll move ahead with this um, and, and keep reporting back uh, at this meeting uh, and others uh, as we make progress with this. Uh, Diane, do you want to cover the I2B2 PMC? Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, so Sean Murphy is is actually the the chair of this um, PMC, um, but I will uh, I will uh, cover this so you can jump to the next slide. Um, so this the the members of the this PMC are are really folks within. Um, uh, Sean's group um, at Partners Healthcare um, at Ma and Mass General. This is, this is the the core group that um, that works on this. Um, go to the next slide, and I'll. So so what I'm what I'm going to cover here is is really um, a number of things. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the uh, features that will be coming in the next two releases. Um, that are already you know, in process and planned, um, some um, upcoming future releases, things that we know are on the horizon um, that will be included, um, although we don't have firm dates. But um, Sean also wanted to put together sort of the principles of the I2B2 PMC, um, really kind of focusing on um, community projects, because really the, the core of a, a community I2B2 projects really involves, you know, people developing ontologies, new I2B2 cells, um, web client um, plugins, workbench plugins, um, or, or, or a combination of all of those. And, and often when um, a, a, the community project um, with these types of things, often they also require, you know, small changes to the core, the core itself. And what we want to do is really establish a way that the community can make requests for those, you know, core changes that they that they um, absolutely need to support their project. And so, what we'll do is we'll we'll um, ask the community projects to uh, be registered as a space on our wiki, um, which is actually really great as well because there's there's so many there's so many different. Um, organizations out there doing lots of really wonderful things and it's really hard um, 
for people to know like who's doing what. And this will be a way that people can see what's going on, maybe collaborate, you know, know that somebody's doing something similar to what you want to do, collaborate um, among the community um, and also just raise awareness. But it also get, will give them a vehicle to be able to request um, changes to the core. And those requests will come in um, to the uh, to the PMC, be evaluated to make sure that it, it makes sense. Um, and then scheduled into a, a new release. Um, we are going to be talking about this um, more and, and evolving this this plan and communicating how um, this this will actually happen um, uh, in the in the coming uh, months. So we can go to the next slide, Rudy. Okay, so this is this is the next release. Um, that's actually coming out um, probably by the end of this week. I had actually sent a note out um, a couple of weeks ago um, prematurely, um, but uh, this this will come out. So this is a a um, change to the workbench. So it's a, an update to the the workbench, which I don't think the workbench has actually had a new release in the last like four or five years. Um, so this will be good. Um, so the ITB2 Java Workbench allows Java widgets such as database connections, tools, and visualization libraries. Okay, so the, the problem was the Java Workbench wasn't able to run on um, an Apple Macintosh platform due to some Java Eclipse incompatibilities. So now they've fixed that and the Workbench can run natively on Linux um, with or without Eclipse. Um, packaging into virtual box distributions solves the, the Apple Java issue. Um, there's also been some enhancements to the timeline plugin and some enhancements to the temporal uh, query plugin. So this is, again, this is just workbench related, but um, uh, this will be out in the next um, a couple of days. So you can jump to the next slide. Okay, so this next release um, has a, a tentative um, release date of uh, January of next year, um, and this this one is an interesting one. So it's a it's a, a complete uh, GWAS solution. Um, so uh, the ITB2 GWAS uh, project is a project that includes loading programs for VC based GWAS data into into um, I2B2. Um, so there's been changes to the I2B2 web client that allows custom methods of construct constructing genomic queries. Okay, so the, the key pieces in, in this will be um, ETL programs for GWAS, um, genomic ontology uh, present, presents the genetic variant as a queryable concept in the I2B2 web client. Um, which is which is going to be really pretty exciting. Um, so value pop up box fully customizable, customizable um, supports left stem um, completion of text from lists. Um, and the other thing, it it you know we're we're obviously not loading in all the GWAS data, but we will um, provide a demo uh, GWAS uh, data set just to give people an idea of um, of how that's done. So. Um, this is this is a pretty exciting um, update. It's um, it's specifically for people who want to load um, GWAS data. So it, and, and it will take a fair amount of work for people to to set up and configure and load their data. Um, I think this is one of those things where there's there's probably a number of of uh, people out there who are very very interested in this, and and this really sets up sets us up to um, to set up you know collaborations. Um, where people can actually start to work together on projects and then um, and then share this. So, um, so this this is um, it's coming at the early next year. Um, next slide is just um, some things that we know are on the horizon. Um, I don't have exact dates for them, but I don't think it's going to be too um, far into um, 2018. So um, this is incorporation of uh, Fire into ITB2. Um, so Fire Cell to allow single patient's data to be returned in Fire. Um, Fire Ontology and ETL to allow direct import of Fire into ITB2. Um, Fire Cell to allow ITB2 to extend to Fire um, query endpoints. Um, so that, for people uh, interested in that, I think that's gonna that's gonna be pretty exciting. 
Um, and also the, the next bullet is, um, and this, this is really support, uh, uh, supporting the, um, the ACT uh, grant, um, accrual for clinical trials. Um, so it's extensions to shrine for management of clinical trials and um, web-based plugins to extend Shrine queries to local I2B2 uh, patient recruitment. So this is all about um, supporting, directly supporting patient recruitment. Um, and then the last is I2B2-based systems to query and return data from observation fact tables included in um, mul uh, multiple different um, I2B2 hives. So as, you know, as, um, as we know about things that are on the horizon that are that are going to be added, um, I really want to make sure that we communicate that on a regular basis. I think this is um, something we haven't really done in the past. Um, people are always saying, "What's you know what's next on the horizon? What are you doing?" I think we we're, we're really trying to be um, more transparent and and also if if people are already working on um, things in, in, in these areas, you know, we definitely want to um, engage them and, and collaborate um, and see if we can, we can work together. So that is, that is the I2B2, Sean Murphy's I2B2 um, PMC. The, the next is um, the I2B2 Transmart PMC, Paul Aviak. Um, is is uh, chairing this group. You can go to the next slide. And I, I think um, okay. So here here are the members uh, in his PMC. He's um, now remember this is a, a fairly new PMC. We've only met um, maybe three times. Um, but what Paul is trying to do is is he's really trying to pull a very a diverse uh, crowd of people because remember he's working with both I two B two and Transmart. So we've got we've got people from from both the I two B two community um, as well as the Transmart community. Um, you know people from from Europe and um, and elsewhere. So um, so again we've just started. But um, if you go to the next slide, I'll kind of explain where where we are. So Paul's, and I know Paul is, is presented to, to this community group um, probably a number of times. And so you've heard his, um, his use cases and how he's using both I2B2 and Transmart. But what he's done is he, he, he uses the most current version of, of I2B2, the 17 uh, or the 1.7 version. So he keeps up with, with the current version of I2B2, but he, he's, he's started with an older, um, version of Transmart, a, a 1.0, and then he's he's continued to develop um, on top of that um, to, to build his, you know, his platform to pull the two pieces together. The problem, and it is open source, but the problem with it is, number one, it's using an old version of Transmart, so it doesn't um, take into account a lot of the enhancements that have um, have been made over the, over the years. Um, and this, the second is he he built it in a way that um, really is 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 not easy to implement and not and not easy for people to adopt. So um, so the 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 initial purpose fo focus on this Transmart or, or this PMC. I mean, Rudy, if you go to the next slide, it will be to um, continue to use the most recent version of I2B2, um, but start with the um, the Transmart 16.2. Um, because the, there's a there's a large it's a it's a stable um, release and there's a there's a very large community in that area so he he really wanted to um, to start there um, to build to build this I2B2 Transmart um, platform um, and if you if you go to the next slide I'll kind of explain so we'll so he so he does that so he pulls in all of the enhancements that he's made over time and builds that into this this. Um, th this enhancement, but what he's what he's focusing on is he's really focusing on Dockerization, so he wants to set up both the I2B2 and the Transmart um, using using Docker um, He is very interested so at the end of the day you know deploy deploy a, a, a development server on um, AWS AWS with Docker um, including both, you know, I2B2 and Transmart, focusing on 
um, authentication and authorization, obviously, because we've, we've got to really make sure we, we nail that if it's going to be um, in that environment. But, but what he wants to do is he wants to know, because there are people within I2B2 and the Transmart community that ha have already done work you know, um, using Docker for these for these instances, and um, he the URL that you have here, you see here, is um, is it is a survey that he um, that he wants to collect data to find out, you know, who's you know kind of who's doing what. And I'm going to be in the next day or so. I'm going to be sending out a um, a note to the the community, at least the development community, you know, at with with this URL to see if we can collect information. So we're not um, so we're we're understanding what people have done and 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 using best practices um, that are that are out there. So that is um, that is the I2B2 Transmart PMC. Um, it, one one last comment here. Um, Paul is interested in um, in uh, uh, allowing additional people to join. In, um, the PMC. So if um, if you are interested or know anybody that's interested, you can you know send us an email um, and we will um, we will add you to our our group. I think we meet um, this PMC just meets once a month. We'll probably pick up um, uh, and, and meet more often as as we start doing active development. But um, this is what we're doing for now. So good. Okay. Okay, why don't you keep going and tell us about your report from Paris. And now I have my report from Paris. So, um, okay. <laughs> and then I'll talk about Amy. All right, so you can go to the next slide. So, um, the, the meeting was at a, it, it was actually at a, it's one of the university hospitals in um, Paris. It's, a, it's actually the hospital that Paul Aviac um, came from. So um, that was kind of fun. Um, I, I'd have to tell you from the, the lobby of the hotel, you can see the Eiffel Tower in, in the background, which was, um, which, which was kind of lovely, although the people that live there could, could care less. Um, and I just have to tell you, so I, wa I, walk in, I walk into the hospital, and of course I don't speak French, and so I walk in and I don't know where I'm going, and I walk up to the information desk and I'm, I'm trying to explain to this woman that I want to go to the I2B2 conference. And they, and they had no idea what I was talking about. And the woman said to me, do you need a doctor? <laughs> I2B2? She thought it was maybe a disease or something. Anyway, I found my way. So that was good. Um, but it was a, a conference that was, um, and this was the first time I attended. Uh, they have a European I2B2 conference. I think they've had those for maybe the past four or five years. Um, and this was the first time I actually attended one. And it was, it, it was actually a really wonderful experience because it brought together um, about 150 people. I think they were expecting initially 100. And so at the end, people just really started to sign up. But there were you know, academics, researchers, engineers um, from the, the US and um, Europe and, and beyond. So you have lots and lots and lots of different people from um, from that um, region and beyond. And it was, um, they brought, you know, the, the topics were, you know, big data challenges, you know, networking for better care, um, extending data repositories beyond clinical data, um, which, is, which is definitely um, something that, um, that brought in a lot of uh, trans people that use Transmart, to, Transmart as well. Um, you know, they, they, in in Europe, their because because it's Europe, their their privacy um, you know laws are are tricky because of the different countries, and so they 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 have a, a lot of uh, discussion. I mean, we do in the U.S. as well, but a lot of discussion around patients, you know, on the benefit of reusing their data for research, um, and trying to make sure that they're getting the they're they're communicating and also getting the appropriate um, consents in place. So. Um, so that's that's that was something that was a, a major piece of the um, of the program, um, you know. Again, some of this I think we've sort of repeated here, but we're you know, again beyond EHR data, which was which is a, a very um, a big emphasis and data governance and, and aspects of of the data warehousing. There was a, a lot of um, specific use cases. Um, 
that you know we're we're constantly asking for uh, for people to to send us information about use cases, like how do people really use this thing? And so I'm really looking forward to um, having the getting the um, the materials and the the presentations posted. Um, I think they'll be posted soon, and we'll we'll link to that from our website, just so people can start to um, to see what people are doing um, in that area. So I think there's we've got one more slide on this. Rudy, you can go to the next slide. So um, Sean Murphy and Paul Aviak were were keynote um, speakers at the conference, um, you know, which was which was great. Um, um, and also, you know, we we had to. You know, uh, you all know we had to cancel our um, our conference at, in Luxembourg because we we just didn't really have um, enough time to to um, pull that together. So because of that, we were able to add um, a number of um, you know uh, presentations that would normally have been in, in Luxembourg to this um, to this conference, which was fantastic. I think that was one of the reasons why the um, the increase in in attendance as well. So um, the organizers were very excited because the, the auditorium did did hold like 300 people could could hold up to 300 people. So they really um, they did well. So um, Peter uh, Rice did a uh, an overview of the I2B2 uh, or the Transmart platform. Um, you know, I I really I wanted that to be on the agenda because I thought it, it would be like a you know. A, Transmart 101 kind of talk because I assumed because it was an I2B2 conference there would be a lot of people there that that didn't know um, Transmart. Um, that to my surprise, the majority of the people that presented all use Transmart as well. So um, that was that was like fantastic. That just sort of justified why we merged these these two foundations. So I was um, I was very excited. Um, Peter Peter asked for a raise of hands of people who had never used um, Transmart, and there was one person that raised their hand that said that they didn't know about Transmart. So that was that was very neat. Um, there was a Smart R workflow um, presentation in Transmart in Transmart and uh, the next generation um, impact of uh, uh, comics on translational research, and then. Um, Ward from the Hive gave a, uh, a presentation on Glowing Bear, which was really well received. Um, and then I gave a, a foundation kind of um, overview, um, and the and the PMC uh, roadmaps were also included. So it was a it was a really great conference. We're talking about um, you know do put next for next year instead of having an I2B2 um, meeting and a, a separate foundation meeting we're talking about combining um, efforts um, and we've already have a, a few people um, that have have volunteered um, a venue for us so we're we'll start the planning process um, fairly soon to um, to get that ball rolling and um, you know I think really soon like you know get get the dates and everything like you know, nailed um, within maybe the next you know two or three months, so people can can actually book their travel and um, and we can get a, a great agenda pulled together. So that is that is it for Paris. Okay, um, one more one more thing you want to talk about, Amy? Yeah, this is this is just quick. Um, so uh, just for the for the folks that are going to be at the AMIA conference in um, November in, in Washington, D.C., um, what we usually do at the AMIA conferences, both the, the conference in the fall and also there's um, the one in um, March, is we have we uh, we have an affiliate um, meeting. We, we book an, a, a room in the in the hotel and we uh, as an affiliate meeting and it's usually in the evening from like 630 to 830 p.m. And we give just an update because there's just a lot of ITB2 users at, and um, certainly we'll talk about Transmart as well at AMIA. So we we um, we will pull this together um, for the November 6 meeting. Um, I'm still um, I'm pulling the pieces together and, and getting a, an agenda. We're, we're, we'll definitely talk about Shrine and the um, the the um, accrual the Act accrual for clinical trial update. Um, Doug McFadden um, from Harvard Catalyst will be uh, presenting that. Um, you know, we're going to talk about the roadmaps and make sure that people have an opportunity to uh, 
to to know what um, kind of what's what's out there and what's on the horizon. And also, we're going to talk about the uh, community participation in the, in the ITB2 PMC. So earlier, I said we want to um, give people the option of of putting their community projects on our wiki um, and also requesting changes to the core if they need it. So we'll we'll really talk about that in more detail. Um, and talk about the the you know the possibility of of having you know uh, people participate in the development of those core changes as well. You know what I mean? It's really you know moving into more open an open open source platform. So that is um, that's it for Washington. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanted to add also a reminder. We have a our next training class. Uh, we've been having. Uh, we have a training class for Transmart um, every month. It's the last Friday, the last uh, Monday of the month at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, these are all classes that are being um, given on a voluntary basis by Rancho Bioscience, by Clarivate, and also by The Hive. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the the most recent classes have been quite interesting. There, there are a couple of brand new classes that haven't been given before. Uh, the Hive gave one last month, and um, uh, we've got uh, this one this month from Rancho. This this one is particularly exciting because it's talking about handling complex data sets, and we've got some uh, uh, interesting data sets that are recently curated uh, by Rancho when working with Michael J. Fox Foundation. These are the PPMI database and the BioFine database, and these are going to be the basis for the, uh, the training class on uh, October 30th. So if you have any interest in this, I suggest that you uh, they register. You need to register ahead of time, but there are, there's plenty of room. But um, this class, we, we've already got quite a few people registered, and uh, we're excited to, to try to bring uh, these, these new uh, classes together. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a great way to you know, learn a bit about the, the platform, but also see some interesting uses as uh, we've, been, we've been trying to have a, you know, a problem-based uh, demonstration and, and training uh, on how to use the, the system, but also, you know, solving particular and very specific problems uh, as we get through it. So again, I encourage you to consider uh, attending this class uh, as we, um, uh, and, uh, again, offered at the end of the month, on October 30th. Please register. Um, we'd also, we'd like to now uh, try to, you know, have like sort of an open discussion for a few minutes. Uh, we have a few minutes left here. Uh, and, you know, we're willing to open the mic to anyone who has um, would like to make any comments. But in particular, you know, the, the community involvement uh, for the foundation is so important. You know, we do what we can to try to pull these things together. Uh, and but, um, you know, we, we would like to certainly hear from you uh, in terms of what, you know, what what could what things could we be doing? What additional things would you like to see us do both in terms of topics at the community meeting, topics for training classes, um, what events should we be thinking about in 2018? We're, we're very interested in where are you going, right? What types of um, uh, events, uh, scientific conferences will you be attending, will you be speaking at? Uh, and then, you know, we've had a great tradition of having hackathons and we've had one datathon, which was very, very interesting, very uh, positive results. Um, what types of, of uh, areas would you be interested in seeing a, a new hackathon put together? You know, and are you willing to to do something? So I've, we've got a, a new um, web page on our site called uh, Suggestions. So it's you go to the foundation site, and at the front page you'll see a suggestions, and we can gather your ideas. But um, right now we'd be willing to to have anyone interested in um, in one say anything and, and make some suggestions. We'd love to hear from you right now. I see Julie Bryant has her hand up. Um, Julie, you wanna just open your mic? You wanna say something? Oh yeah, I, I, I just sent a link. So anybody who wants to have access to that um, Parkinson's data, it's free of charge. So you can um, either play with it on Transmart on the link I sent out to, um, to Rudy if he wants to distribute it, um, or you can download it and, and use it in other programs. And there are six more data sets coming in the next few months. So. Um, there's a lot of um, Transmart ready data there. Great, Julie, thanks. I will include the link in the slide deck when I send it out. Thank you. Um, I should have put on here, you know, the, the other part of this is, you know, having, um, you know, open data sets, you know, trying to, to bring whatever data sets we can 
and make them public. Uh, we again, we we are delighted to be kind of a broker, you know, to to make these things available. Of course, we have to have the appropriate licenses, et cetera, as we do that. But um, you know, we'd really appreciate that. Um, you know, if, if you have these different things, we'd be happy to do it. Does anyone like to, you know, have any comments or, or suggestions at this point? Um, you know, open up Diane, you want to say anything else about this? No, we just we we'd love to hear from you. And if you um if you can think of things later, I mean certainly we've got the suggestion um box and pass that on to other other folks. Okay. I mean, the, the, these meetings should all be about, you know, uh, benefiting you and providing you with um, additional information. Okay, well then let's open up to any questions uh, that you have on anything that we presented here, uh, the, the roadmaps, any of the, the PMCs, uh, membership program, anything. Anybody has any questions, please, uh, you have a couple of options, raise your hand. Um, you can also type in the chat window uh, or type into the question uh, window. I don't, I don't see anything right now. Um, I see a question coming in from Jack London. Uh, did the nominations close on October 9th? Uh, know that they're going to close on November, was it the 3rd? Yeah, it's November November 3rd. We extended the time um, because the membership meeting was actually going to be part of the Luxembourg conference. So we pushed it out a couple of weeks to give people um, a little bit more time to get their nominations in. We should also say a number of people who are nominated for members have not, have not return their membership application. Uh, this would be a great time for you to do that. Okay. I don't see anything, any other questions? Okay, well, I think that's it then we're, we're done. Um, Again, this has been recorded and the recording will be posted within a day or so. Uh, we have all of our recordings. We have a YouTube channel for the foundation that you can find all of the recordings. Um, but uh, we do also have them organized on our website and you can find all of the recordings and the slide decks uh, on the website for these meetings, for all the training classes and for um, most of the events that we participate in. So again, thanks everyone. And uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you.